All right, so I'm here with our seminarian, Diego Castellanos. Um, so the people of St. Monica's want to know, who is Diego Castellanos? That's a great question. Um, like you said, my name is Diego Castellanos. I'm 22. Uh, I was born and raised here in San Antonio. Um, I've always been a part of the St. Monica's Parish. Um, growing up, I helped to hand out books um, to my brothers, um, and my parents were always there. Uh, <laughs> making sure that we weren't making a, a muck of things um, and I don't know when I when I was growing up the the church was just always part of my life um, and so when I was going through school and stuff like that um, trying to think of like I guess well, what I would do in my life the church was always there uh, as an option um, and so as I got older uh, you know I went through like the the acts ministries that we have here at St. Monica's um, and I really got to enrich my faith through that um, and when I went into college, um, they also had ministries there for, for, uh, for college ministry to help out uh, on campus. Um, and so um, the, the faith has always been there for me and something that I've been uh, active in. Uh, but it wasn't until I got to UTSA where I was studying communications um, that uh, I got the call from God to say, to say yes, to say yes to the priesthood. Um, and it was really through um, an experience that I went through uh, with a bunch of guys at UTSA. There was like 40 of us. Um, you were actually one of them, uh, called Exodus 90. Um, and if, if y'all don't know about it, uh, it's like a, it's an, it's an experience where a, a group of men get together um, and we practice a, some asceticism. So like some things that, um, where we take things out of our lives that aren't necessary. Um, they're kind of the excess in our lives. So that's like, um, it's not necessarily a sin to do them, but like you can go without doing them. Um, so it's like watching TV, um, eating sugar, um, taking hot showers, like things that aren't necessarily necessary, but they make life a little bit more comfortable. Um, and so you would take those out of your life and then uh, do a lot more praying, do a lot more reflection. Um, and that's really what got me into um, finding out what it really was that God was calling me. To do and when all the excess was pushed out, out of my life uh, I could really um, hear God's voice and and pay attention to it and also respond to it um, because it wasn't until then that I had realized that my whole life uh, God had been calling me to um, to this vocation of at least discerning the priesthood um, but I had never been aware of, of the call it would it was always there but it wasn't until everything was pushed out that I can clearly see what it was um, so now I'm in my second year uh, in the seminary. I'm classified as College 3 or Philosophy 3, um, which means I still have a ways to go uh, if, if I'm to be a priest, God willing. Um, but I'm here to serve the parish and the people of God more than anything. All right, cool. So you mentioned that you're a seminarian, so you are in the seminary. Right. Um, so. For people who don't know, what does that process look like? How long does it take? What exactly is a seminary or to be a seminarian? Right, that's a great question. Um, a lot of people, uh, if they do know what a seminary is, um, they say, well, it's a place where uh, guys go and then they become priests afterwards. Um, and it's kind of oversimplified in that matter. Um, the, the seminary isn't necessarily built to um, create priests, right? It's not a factory. You don't just pump guys in and then they become priests. That's not how it happens. You don't just spend time there and then magic, you're a priest, right? Uh, it's a place, uh, more than anything, of discernment, um, which is like trying to figure out what is, what is it that God's calling you to do? Um, what is your vocation? And so um, in the seminary, you're, you're not being formed to be a priest. You're formed to be um, a, better, a better person and a better child of God, um, first and foremost. Um, and if God is calling you to be a priest, then by the end of it, uh, you'll be a priest. And if he's not calling you to be a priest, then somewhere along the way, he'll call you out of the seminary, and there's no problem with it. Because at the end of the day, if you're supposed to be a priest, God will call you to be that. And if you're supposed to be something else, God will call you to be that. Um, here in San Antonio, um, the, the way it works is that you must have uh, at least two years of philosophy before you start your theological uh, studies. Um, but everybody kind of enters at different stages in their life, so uh, how long it takes to become a priest is very different for everybody. Um, 
but let's say for instance somebody straight out of high school decided they wanted to be a priest um, and that's also key they, they must have at least their high school uh, they must be graduated from high school so high school over 18 diploma. right um, so if they come straight out of high school then it would be four years of college or philosophy um, and that's to ensure that they have at least a bachelor's degree so they will have their bachelor's in pastoral ministries with a focus in philosophy after that they would do four years of theological studies and in between those four years is a year called a pastoral year uh, where they spend the whole entire year at a parish um, just kind of shadowing the priest um, seeing what he does seeing how he lives um, more than anything uh, and it's a great way for the seminarian to experience what his life is like as a priest and not just the theory of what a priest's uh, life is actually like. Um, so in total, straight out of high school, it's nine years. Um, and then it, it varies um, from person to person. So like if you come into the seminary already having a bachelor's degree, but not two years of philosophy, then you'll do what they call the pre-theology program, which is two years of philosophy before entering theology. Um, so it'll be two years plus four years plus the one, uh, quick maths at seven. Right, mm -hmm. um, so seven years. So it, it really just depends on all the guys, um, and then uh, it, it's kind of also just like with regular college. Like it doesn't necessarily matter matter how long it takes you to get there. Uh, what matters is if you get there or not, um, and if that's actually what you're called to do. Um, so if it takes you nine years, if it takes you ten years, twelve years, however long it takes you, if God's still calling you to it, that's what's most important. Great answer, solid. All right, um, so these are going to be, <laughs> these are going to be kind of like, you don't have to explain too much, but um, they're like quick fire questions. Okay. So just to get to know you a little bit more. First one, what is your favorite dish? And describe it if it's not American. Easy. Um, so for me, uh, for especially my family that knows me, uh, it's pizza. Um, I. During the whole pandemic, uh, COVID crisis thing, uh, we were locked in our houses, so I decided to teach myself how to make pizza. Um, and I spent months uh, working on my craft uh, to, to make pizza. So pizza, but more specifically, like the Neapolitan style um, with like a crispy crust. It's good stuff. Follow up question, does pineapple go on pizza? No. <laughs> well, the answer is yes, it does. Um, if it should, um, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what the Neapolitans say, and they say no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, when you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Um, there was never really one thing that I really stuck on for too long, um, mainly because I didn't want to, um, I guess, trap myself in thinking that the moment I picked something, like it was going to be that forever. Um, if anything new came to my mind, like that's that's what I was like. Okay, like maybe I can do that. So. I need to work on this or that so I could be able to do it. Um, but I think the ones that I thought would be the most fun would to be a soccer announcer. Um, so the guy calling the games, like either on TV or live at the stadium. Um, that was just something that growing up, that's, that's what we would watch. We would watch a lot of soccer. And so doing that just seemed like so much fun. Um, and the other thing was a cruise director. Um, <laughs> we had once been on a cruise. Um, and there's just a guy who's like the life of the party. And every single event he's there and he's the one pumping the energy into everybody um and so that was when i saw that i was like that's it that's what i want to do um but god has a way of changing my plans so it's very different from a freeze uh, in, in some ways <laughs> <laughs> could be similar could be very similar <laughs> all right um who is your favorite saint and why that's a great question um there's i mean there's literally tens of thousands to choose from um but I think, personally, it, it comes down to those uh, saints that I've really grown in my personal relationship with them um, and getting to know them so that they can lead me closer to Christ. Um, and so, for me, the one that uh, I think really helped, especially in discerning my vocation, was uh, St. Teresa of uh, She, Her little way um, is, is what she's most famous for. Uh, which is just finding God and all the little things and doing those little things that uh, ultimately add up uh, into so, so many great things in life that will lead you to Christ. Um, and I think it's so easy for us in this world to um, try and go out and do the big thing, trying to go out um, and be viral, try to go out and uh, be the next superstar, right? That's the whole thing. That's the whole, uh, the whole idea. 
Um, but it, it really is in the small things and the simple things, um, holding open the door for somebody, saying thank you, uh, saying good morning. Um, just those small things can really um, not only change the other people's lives that you're interacting with, but also in, change your internal life um, and how you are able to see others and also allow Jesus into your life. Cool. Awesome. She's cool. She um, what is your favorite Bible verse? Um, my favorite Bible verse um, is in Matthew chapter 6, um, verse 9, and it's actually the Our Father. Um, I, I like kind of the, the whole context of it, which is like 5 through 8, um, and then it gets to 9, which is the Our Father. Um, and it, it focuses mainly on how we should pray, how we should go about um, worship, worshiping. Um, and I think it's, it's very important because uh, it, it prefaces the, our Father by saying, like, don't go out in the streets like the hypocrites and like, um, like post on Facebook and say, like, oh, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, right? Because it's so easy to do that. It's so easy for us to uh, just type that in, put it, and then see how many likes we get, see how many people are reacting to it. Um, and it gives us that rush as opposed to, um, as it says, go into your inner room um, and pray to your Father in secret who sees all things in secret. Uh, something like that. Um, and so I think it's important for us to um, not only reflect upon it, but also apply it to our lives. Cool, awesome. Um, what other place of the world would you li like to live in, if you could, and why? Um, this definitely ties into the, the dish, the favorite dish is pizza. So anywhere in Italy, um, not, I'm not picky about it, um, if you're listening, God. <laughs> Um, yeah, we, we got a chance to go a couple years ago um, for just a, a very short period of time, but being there it was just, um, it's, it's so different because we're so uh, used to here, at least in San Antonio, we say, oh, we have so much history, you know, we have the missions um, that are like 300 years old and the city's like very old, um, but over there, like, it's really old and there's so much more history and it's so much more, so much more vibrant. Um, I remember walking into a parish that was uh, celebrating a thousand years of being a parish and I was like, we're over here bragging about 300 years and they, they're like so much further ahead. Um, and not like it's a competition, but uh, just the amount of um, beauty that's over there, um, especially that's very much unknown to us here. Um, I think it would be a big joy to live there um, and also to be able to uh, be so close to so many places that so many great saints, saints lived in um, and, and minister to and to be able to reflect upon that as well. <laughs> um, would you participate singing in a karaoke night? Absolutely, on one condition. Uh, my only condition would be to sing uh, the song Tequila by the Champs. Gosh. Um, that's my only condition. If you know the song, you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, that's the only song I would sing. There's like three words in that song. There's actually only one word. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the same word. <laughs> Big brain. <laughs> okay. Um, what, which is your favorite song or movie? Um, movie, I would have to go with um, Knives Out. I watched it um, in the theater when it came out. Um, I'm not really a big movie buff, but I got to go with a couple friends. Um, and it was just a great movie. I love kind of the murder mystery um, aspect of it. Uh, Daniel Craig was phenomenal in it, as well as Ana de Armas. Um, favorite song? Uh, I really love music, um, a lot of different kinds of music. There's not really anything that I don't listen to. Um, but if I can pick like a group that I really enjoy um, instead of songs is uh, Hall & Oates. So Daryl Hall and John Oates, uh, they're kind of like an 80s band. Um, but I really enjoy basically any song they play. Nice. Um, do you play an instrument? And if so, which one? Uh, currently, I'm working on teaching myself a guitar. Um, it's not going that great. I know like two chords. <laughs> it's been like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I used to play uh, French horn when I was in middle school and high school. Um, I was part of their marching band, orchestra band. Uh, and then I also picked up the ukulele, learned a couple songs, uh, I know you did too. Um, and so a little bit more uh, well-versed with the French horn than the ukulele or guitar, but hopefully I can at least learn one song of the guitar, even if it's like born in the USA or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, one more chord. 
I mean, exactly. <laughs> week by week. It's, it's the little way. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite sport? Yes, soccer. Um, soccer by far is my favorite sport. Um, I own uh, too many soccer jerseys. Um, I'm working on that though. <laughs> um, but sports in general, I, I really enjoy them. Um, we grew up playing basketball. Uh, we played up here in St. Monica's actually. Um, so, and then we would also play after work sometimes. Um, on Sundays, we'd go out and play basketball. So I really like basketball and the San Antonio Spurs as well. Um, and football, I'll watch it. Um, yeah, there's sports in general. Yeah, all of them, especially soccer. Especially soccer. All right. Um, then who's your favorite sports team? Uh, sports team overall uh, that transcends all the sports. I think uh, the Spurs for sure. Um, that's very much the culture of San Antonio. Um, if someone were to ask you, you could wrap it up in a nutshell. Um, like what is San Antonio? You say San Antonio Spurs. Um, it really kind of envelops everything. Um, but if it's the favorite sports team of my favorite sport, um, I would probably have to pick Barcelona. Um, mainly because of uh, how much history they have, how many great players they've had, um, things like that. And it's always a joy to watch them. Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. All day. All right. Um, which is your favorite Disney princess? Easy. Uh, Snow White. Why? Snow White. Because she's the fairest of them all. I mean, it's, it's right there. Okay. It makes it easy. And also, she has like all the dwarves. Um, and I grew up with three older brothers, so same thing. Um, so What? <laughs> I was going to say a good answer, but I don't know anymore. It's OK, Snoopy. Mo moving on. <laughs> Um, growing up, which was your favorite cartoon or TV show? Um, favorite was probably Pokemon. Uh, we were really big into Pokemon as kids. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh too, we were big into that. Um, but definitely Pokemon. And then it came back with Pokemon Go and uh, that was a whole fiasco. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was your favorite school subject? Um, biology, actually. Um, that was not something that I was expecting to enjoy as much as I did. Um, I didn't really like science like in elementary and middle school um, until my eighth grade year I took a biology class with a, a teacher who um, was actually really big into soccer. We both had him um, and he made, he made learning biology a lot more fun um, and not only that he made us understand like why it was so important to learn biology um, and kind of the beauty of the human body um, and then I ended up taking uh, that year of biology two more years in high school um, and another in college. Um, so. Uh, it was just something that I kind of always enjoyed uh, learning about the intricacies and also the simplicity of the body. Cool. So you said your home parish is here, St. Monica's. That's right. What do you like most about St. Monica's? Um, I think more, more than it just being like a second home to me growing up, um, it, it really is the people that I've been able to meet here and interact with um, have been some of the most genuine people I've ever met in my life. Um, Grant said it's been a short life, 22 years. Um, I don't have much to go off of. Um, but this is really um, the place that I was formed. Um, not, we, we think so much about like school being where like, uh, we're like, educated and stuff like that, but as to education of how the world works, as to um, how relationships develop, this is where it happened for me. Um, and so for me to just be able to um, represent St. Monica's is a great honor um, as a seminarian um, but most importantly as a Catholic um, and so to, to be able to serve them in any capacity I might um, I'd be more than willing. Cool. Well, that's all the questions we got. Thank you for your time sir. Of course anytime. Can say something off the cuff? Short and brief? Sure. <laughs> um, That was brief. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was just fast. I didn't hear it. No, I was kidding. Um, I think more than anything, um, to not be afraid. Uh, we hear it so much in the Bible. Uh, be not afraid. Do not be afraid. Um, and I think it's important to uh, say yes, not only uh, or say yes to God, not only in uh, like the big moments in your life, um, but also in the very small ones and the very minute ones. Um, whether that's as simple as uh, you deciding to say the prayer before a meal instead of just like attacking it um, 
just always being uh, able to take that time uh, and not to be afraid that like, oh, somebody might judge me if I make the sign of the cross in public or uh, somebody might judge me um, if, I, if I don't hang out with them, whatever it might be, the peer pressure. Um, and so more than anything, to, to not, not to be afraid to respond to God's call and whatever he's calling you to do um, and that ultimately it's going to be for your own good. Um, there was a commercial for uh, peanut butter back in the day um, in Spanish and it said, it's por tu bien, it's for your good. Um, and so they would eat the peanut butter because it was for their good. Um, and it's the same thing with God. Um, those, those little scoops, uh, we could say, that He gives us in life, they're, they're for our own good, even though sometimes they might taste a little bitter at the time. Um, ultimately, they're leading us to Him. Um, and and that's, that's, more, that's, that's more important than anything we could ever imagine here on earth.